This is chapter nine in intermediate accounting. And we're gonna do an example on the gross profit method for estimating inventory. The first part, this top part up here, is where the data for the problem is. And what we're going to do is we're really gonna talk about what would we do if we're gonna have a markup on cost of 25% on cost, and what would we do if the markup was a 20% markup on retail? So that's the basic information. This here is just your typical setup. There's a couple things you really ought to know from these problems, and one is making sure you really understand the cost of goods sold section. Most of it when we, that we've dealt with so far is beginning inventory, plus purchases, gives goods available, and then we minus ending inventory and end up with cost of goods sold. Well, this is kind of the same thing. When we talk about purchases, though, there's some things that we add to it. So in this case, we're really gonna talk about purchases, and then you might have a purchase discount, and freight in, you had to pay for shipping. Those all come together to become the net purchases. So our formula, beginning inventory, plus what will be some of these three items as your net purchases gives you what's available. And then we subtract out ending inventory to get cost of goods sold. Well, if we can take what's available minus ending inventory and get cost of goods sold, we can take what's available minus cost of goods sold I can take the available minus the cost of goods sold and solve for what's ending inventory. The question becomes, how much was really sold? And in the, this case that we're dealing with, the idea is we don't have all of the information. What we do have is we've got the information at the sales rate. So we know what was sold. So if we know what was sold and we know what the markup is, then we can figure out what the cost of goods sold is. So we're gonna back in a little bit to what was sold, and just like purchases, we had purchase returns and purchase discounts, we're gonna take sales minus sales returns and get net sales, and if your company takes sales discounts, they'll be in there as well. And then, how much is the markup? So if we take out our gross profit, if you think about your um, beginning part of your income statement, we start with sales minus cost of goods sold, and that gives you the gross profit. Well, likewise, if I know my sales and I know my gross profit, I'm gonna back into the cost of goods sold. So we're gonna work on that premise. And what we have is, so we've got our net sales, and we subtract out our gross profit, and we end up with called sales at cost, but that's basically our, our cost of goods sold. Now, once we know our cost of goods sold, we're gonna back up and find the ending inventory. And here's the problem. Now, our first one is gonna be a markup, a gross profit markup on sales of 30%. We need to pay attention to what the gross profit is. This is actually the gross profit on sales. So it's compared to the sales price, not compared to the cost. We basically plug in the information that was on the previous page. So you end up with beginning inventory, combining your purchases, purchase discount and freight in is gonna get you net purchases. And then it gives you goods available. So once we have goods available, remember goods available minus ending inventory is cost of goods sold, or goods available minus cost of goods sold is ending inventory. So we need to figure out the cost of goods sold. We're gonna plug in and we've got sales minus sales return, so we end up with the net sales. We're gonna multiply the net sales by 30%, and we find out that the profit, gross profit was 278,400, 
Subtract that, and you get your sales at cost, or your cost of goods sold, as 649600 which means ending inventory has to be the difference at $175,400. Now, remember, this is the gross profit markup on sales. This formula deals with the markup on sales. What if you're given the markup based on cost? If you're given the percent markup on cost, you're going to have to convert it to the markup on sales or the markup on retail. So in this example, we've got a 25% gross profit based on the cost. So we're going to convert it to the markup on retail. If we think about the formulas that we know, the markup amount divided by the cost gives the percent markup at cost. And the markup divided by the retail gives the markup percent at retail. Now the cost plus the markup at cost gives you the retail price. So if we substitute cost plus the markup at cost for the retail formula, we end up with the markup divided by the cost plus the markup at the cost in order to get the markup at retail. So if we were given 25% markup at cost, and we divide that by 100%, which is the cost, plus 25%, we end up with a 20% markup at retail. So putting that back into our formula, what we end up doing on the second time is the same problem, except when we get down here, to the net sales, we're going to multiply that by 20%. So we still end up with beginning inventory, still have our net purchases, so we end up with goods available of 825000 Goods available minus cost of goods sold is ending inventory. So we're working on that premise and we've got to figure out cost of goods sold. So we're going to go from sales, subtract out sales returns to get net sales. Net sales minus the markup of 185,600 is cost of goods sold of 742,400 and that leaves ending inventory of $82,600.